And uh, on the subject of encouragement, um, it's an encouragement to know that God is our rock. So we were singing those, those songs this evening. And uh, Moses here even writes a rock song that we're going to look at. I'm just being funny, but, uh, well, not very funny. Deuteronomy 31, verse 19 uh, God commissions a song. It says, Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. So God tells Moses, I want you to write a song now. And uh, you can lay out some things here that will help them. Now go over to uh, verse 30 of chapter 31. It says, And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. Uh, let's see. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, the God of truth and without iniquity, just and right. I, I'm not going to read the whole song. Uh, we'll, we'll look at some other verses uh, a bit more as, as we go along. I think it goes pretty much down to verse 43. And uh, the, the subject tonight is, is the fact that we can, we can rest on the Lord. We can trust the Lord. God is, is our rock. Uh, we have a solid base, a solid foundation. There's an old saying, something like, if we stand for nothing, we'll fall for anything. And that, that's pretty much the way people are today. Because they have no foundation, they'll believe anything. They'll believe there's people who live in outer space. They'll believe, that, they'll believe anything. It doesn't matter how fantastic it is. Someone will believe it. Uh, but when you have a base, when you have a foundation for belief, uh, it helps you. It gives you that security. And as well, uh, the other advantage of God, our rock, is that he is our hiding place. Um, now, I don't know if I've mentioned this before. Somebody was saying that they'd gone to see the, the penguins. Oh, I think it was the cars, wasn't it? And uh, we used to live near a place called Penguin Island. We'd go out there occasionally, and I remember seeing a, a penguin head. When it heard us coming, it put its head under a rock. <laughs> its whole body was hanging out. <laughs> he felt better, you know, with his <laughs> beak under that, that rock. Well, God's not like, it's not like that with God. It's not like a false protection. Um, Psalm 18, verse 2, I'll just, just read it to you. He says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. He just brings out all kinds of pictures, doesn't he, of running somewhere for safety. And uh, that's what God is. God is our rock. And uh, it, it's an encouragement to us as we, as we trust the Lord. There's great encouragement to the Christian, uh, knowing that God is our rock. He's that solid base. He's that, that hiding place. Uh, so that, that encourages us, and I'm going to use the illustration. It also gives us rocks to throw. Uh, when, when you're talking to people, there's, there's truths that you can, you can share with them that will help them. Um, look at, at verse 4 there in Deuteronomy 32. Let me get back there. We're, we're in Deuteronomy 32 there, Tatiana. And uh, verse 4 it says, um, he is the rock, his work is perfect. Now just, just stop reading there. That, that word means complete. Uh, he doesn't keep changing. God is the same, though, like the Bible says, yesterday and today and forever. Now, I don't know if you know much about science, but I can tell you this. The science books they used when I was in school, they don't use them anymore. <laughs> Um, probably some of you younger people the same way, but every few years, they're always changing. Evolution's always changing. They're making up stories all the time about how it works. But God stays the same. 
Uh, let me just read these verses to you. Hebrews 13, he says, uh, God says, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And he says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. That's where that verse is. It's Hebrews 13, verse, verse 8. Uh, God is perfect. He's complete. He doesn't need to add. He doesn't need to reduce. Uh, he doesn't need to change. Um, and when you, when you know the Lord, it helps you to have an understanding of, of life because it explains the past, it explains the present, it explains the future. You know, a lot of people are wondering, where did we come from? Where are we going? <laughs> and you know, I've found people where they think it's really wise that they have all these questions. No, wisdom is when you have answers. <laughs> and God has the answers for us. We know where we came from. We know the path. We know where we're, we can know where we're going. Uh, it makes, it, it gives an explanation for things. Uh, the fact that God doesn't change. The fact that God is, is our rock. Uh, in Revelation, he says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. God is our rock. And, and as well, you know, thinking about that, that phrase, uh, his work is perfect. Uh, he completes us. You know, without God, people are incomplete. God didn't make us like a chair. You know, we, we have, we're made in the image of God, body, soul, and spirit. And, uh, you know, there's, there's more to life than just our body. There's more to life than just our thoughts. Sometimes we think that just because we think something, it must be an important thought. <laughs> um, pretty good mark of a schizophrenic, actually, but anyway. Uh, and here's the rock that you can, you can throw. You're incomplete without God. There's more to life. And, and you need to try and help people to see that there's more to life than just the physical. There's more to life than, than the, an incomplete um, existence without the spiritual, without knowing the Lord. Uh, someone used, I don't know who started it originally, but uh, saying that there's, there's a God-shaped hole in every person's heart. And only God can fill it. And uh, keep, keep that thought in mind. Uh, people need to understand they're incomplete without God. And, but the problem, there's a warning here. Satan will give you false hope. Most people in the world are chasing something that they think will complete them. And the problem is they get to the end of the path and they say, well, that didn't work. What else can I try? Well, Satan, he's got a whole bag full of stuff. You know, he'll... You've got thousands of things you can, you can waste your life on. Uh, only God completes us. So, so number one there, uh, he is the rock. His work is perfect. That, that it can encourage us. Uh, God is, is not wondering, oh, you know, how's this all going to, oh, how's this going to turn out? Those people in Australia, you know, they're voting on that. Oh, <laughs> no, God's never surprised. God knows what's going on. Uh, we're but the, the, thing, the thought we need to get across to those who don't know the Lord is there's more to life. A person is incomplete without God. Secondly, he says there in verse 4, all his ways are judgment. All his ways are judgment. <coughs> that word judgment just means right. Um, if you look up this word, there's some places it will actually be translated right. Uh, Genesis 18, 25, where... Um, I think it's Abraham says to God, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Exact same word. Uh, our God is, is right. And this is talking about God's, God's character. And he goes through some of them there in, in verse 4. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right. Uh, God is a God of truth. He's faithful. H have you ever told a lie without meaning to, like you, you said something, you thought it was true, but then you find out later it's not. God never does that. <laughs> All right? Uh, God is always truth. And uh, we can count on that. That, that encourages us. You know, we can be wrong. You can, you can be sure something is, and be wrong. But God is, is never that way. God is truth. And he says he's without iniquity. That means there's no injustice or unrighteousness in God. 
Uh, look at Deuteronomy 32, verse 31. And I want to show you the contrast with false gods. It's, it's just a couple of verses in this chapter. It says, for their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. <laughs> false gods are not like our God. And even people who are God's enemies know that. You know, people who worship false gods know that they have flaws and problems and, and really down in their heart, they probably know they're not real. Um, as well, verse 37, he shall say, where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted. You remember Elijah when he was having that battle with the false prophets and he said, oh, yell louder, maybe your God's asleep. Or basically, I think he's saying, maybe he's gone to the toilet. <laughs> he's gone off somewhere. Um, our, our God is, is faithful. He's without iniquity. Uh, the next word he used there is he's just. Just and right. That means he's righteous, he's straight, he's correct. Now, here, here's the rock you, you throw when you're in conversation with people who need to know the Lord. Why do you have moral values? You know, people, lost people, people who are not Christians, Everybody notices when things aren't right, don't they? They especially notice if we're not right. <laughs> you know, those Christians, there they weren't right that time. Uh, people care. People care about morals. People care about especially themselves being right and so on. And, and the rock we need to throw into their conscience is, why do you have moral values? If, if all you are is chem chemicals and you know, time and chance, what difference does it make? But it does make a difference. I find it amazing that people get so passionate about opposing creation. <laughs> Why would they care? Uh, but we need to understand our God is, his ways are judgment. He's right. And the reason people have moral values is because God made them. Look at uh, chapter 32, verse 18. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Now, it's just a, I've used that verse because it's in this chapter, but the Bible tells us that God created us and we have some of his qualities, even when they're quite warped. You'll, you'll find people who are very immoral in many ways, but they always have something that's right and something that's wrong. Even if it's something as awful as how you kill someone. You know, there's a right way to kill them and there's a wrong way to kill them, you know. Uh, everybody has some moral code. A and as well, we recognize justice, we recognize beauty, we recognize love, things that are not just time and chance. Uh, the reason we have these moral values is because God made us. And the Bible says we're made in the image of God. The rock you throw here is, where did we come from? Because people without God cannot go back to a beginning. They cannot. They can't go back to nothing. They have to have something. And uh, you know, just from a logical point of view, something has to be eternal. Someone has said, everything that has a beginning has a cause. And that's a true statement. Uh, everything that has a beginning has a cause. But for, for there to be anything, something has to be eternal. And just that question, a lot of people won't think about it and won't, won't answer it, but uh, the question we ask is, where did we come from? You know, they go back to this speck that blew up and the world became, well, where did that speck come from? Uh, I, I made a few copies of these. I've had them out before. It's a definition of atheism. There's a few copies here. You're welcome to take some. The belief that there was nothing. Okay, listen. The belief that there was nothing and nothing happened to nothing and then nothing magically exploded for no reason, creating everything. And then a bunch of everything magically rearranged itself for no reason whatsoever into self-replicating bits which turned into dinosaurs. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> um, I'll leave those around every once in a while just, just for fun. Um, where do we come from? You know, God, God made us. Everything that has a beginning has a cause. But God has no beginning and no end. And if you don't believe in God, you have to believe something else is eternal. Matter? Well, where did it come from? Um, 
our rock is perfect, he's right, he's eternal. And in verse 15, as well, he offers salvation. This is about Jeshurun, waxed fat and kicked, thou art waxen fat and art grown thick. <laughs> it's probably nobody's life verse. Uh, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. He lightly esteemed, and I'm sorry it's a, a negative statement, but God offers salvation. Now, you see this in people's lives and morals in that generally people are concerned about the future. Have you ever noticed that? There's people who want to save the earth. Got to save the earth. Why do they care? I mean, really, why would they care? They have a sense of eternity is why they care. They have a sense that there should be a future. <laughs> and you ask some people, you know, if, if you die, you know, oh, I don't care. I think they're lying, quite frankly, or they're stupid. Uh, God tells us what will happen with eternity. And uh, what about eternity? Well, the Bible says God offers refuge. Chapter 33 there, verse 27, beginning. This is a great verse. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. God offers refuge for eternity. Now, what a blessing that is. Let me read you one other verse. This is Isaiah 45 and verse 22. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. Now, God offers salvation. And uh, the, the rock that we put into the conversation here is, well, where will you spend eternity? I remember a lady saying to me, oh, that question you asked me, if you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? She said, I just couldn't quit thinking about it. Because <laughs> people do think about their mortality, uh, sometimes uh, more than others. Where will you spend eternity? These are just some, some thoughts, but you know, as you look at, at God's word, we can be encouraged by who God is. Uh, God is our rock, the rock of our salvation. There's a verse that Jesus gave in Matthew 21, verse 44, and these are the two basic options you have with the rock. He says, Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. That's Matthew 21, 44. There's your two options with the rock. You can fall on it, or it will fall on you. And that, it's a fearful verse when you, when you understand it. Uh, when you fall on the rock, that's, he, he's your savior. When he falls on you, he's your judge. Uh, as a Christian, if you know the Lord, God is our rock. He's our solid ground. He's our refuge. And uh, you know what encouragement that is? Uh, we don't have all the answers, and I'm sure there's, there's people who might laugh at my, my logic here tonight, but um, you know, we, can, we can be encouraged and have hope in the Lord. He's our rock. He's our refuge. He's our hiding place. Any comments or questions before we take some, some prayer requests tonight? Do be in prayer for our church and the different things going on. Uh, there's there's.